What's up everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter and in this episode, I'm gonna be doing a complete crash course, a total overview of Adobe XD. This is the 2023 revised edition. We're gonna cover all the latest and greatest features of Adobe XD, as well as all the basics. By the end of this video, you should know everything that you need to know to start using Adobe XD to design web applications, mobile applications, websites, and more. I'm really excited to get started and walk you through everything that has to do with Adobe XD. Let's do it. All right, let's jump in and learn about Adobe XD. You can see I have it open here on my desktop. It is available for both Mac and Windows, as long as you have an Adobe subscription. Uh, when we open up XD, we get our little welcome screen here, which has a couple of options. Of course, you can hit the big blue button uh, to start a new file. You can also pick from different sizes or device sizes to give you a starting artboard. Um, artboards are an idea or a concept I'll show you a little bit more about inside. Got some helpful tips and a lot of your recent files if you've been designing inside of Adobe XD. I'm just gonna go ahead and open up this current file that I've been working on. And you can see Adobe XD opens right up and we are ready to go. Let's take a quick tour of the interface, show you around, make you feel at home. We have our canvas right smack dab in the middle. That's where our mouse is kind of wiggling around at. And uh, here we can point and click at things. And if we hold down shift, we get the hand and that'll allow us to drag around the interface. If you have a trackpad, you can also just kind of like trackpad around like that. Um, so that is an infinite canvas that you can zoom in and out of. I'm holding down command. Uh, plus or minus, that'd be control plus or minus on the PC. Now we have all of our artboards uh, that are on like our canvas and each of those artboards are represented in our layers panel. Currently our layers panel is showing each of those artboards, one, two, three, and four. And as I click on them, it highlights them over to the right, like you can see there. But if I click on any one of the individual artboards and the contents within, it's gonna jump into the actual layers panel uh, so now we can drill down on individual elements. And from there, you can just be working in that artboard itself and seeing all the layers inside. But at any point, if you click on the canvas, it's gonna kind of zoom you back out in the layers panel, that 10,000 foot view to all of the artboards themselves. That's our canvas, that's our layers panel. To the left-hand side here, you're gonna have the tools panel. It's always gonna be present. We have our direct selection tool, which is V on your keyboard if you like hotkeys. You also have your rectangle tool, that's R, ellipse with E, polygon, which will allow you to create lots of different shapes with multiple different sides. Um, we have line, pen tool, text tool, artboard tool, and our zoom tool. At the very bottom, this is an important part of our interface. This is where we are currently at. We are in our layers view. These are the three different views of Adobe XD. By pressing command Y, we will see that layers view. It shows all artboards, objects, groups in our document. Uh, we can also jump over to the libraries view. That's gonna be command shift Y. Those are really important hotkeys to jump back and forth. You will be doing that a lot in Adobe XD. But this allows us to use our libraries, our styles, our components, which we'll talk about later, absolutely. And then we also have our plugin view, Command Shift P. And so you can see if I was just kind of like out here designing, I can press Command Y, that'll actually hide and then show our layers. Command Shift Y to jump over to our assets and all of our document assets. And then Command Shift P to jump over to all of the plugins in that left-hand panel. It just switches everything in that left-hand panel. Let's hit Command Y and go back to our layers. And now we have those three views memorized. We move up to the top. You can see we can click back uh, to home to bring up that home screen if we want. But within our current file, we have a design kind of like view. We have a prototype workspace, we'll call it. And we have the share workspace. We have the name of our file in the very top here. And if we just double click on that, we should be able to rename our document if we want to. Uh, over on the right hand side, we have the ability to do device preview. So if I plug in um, this, my computer that I'm working on to my device, we'd be able to actually open up the XD previewer and uh, make sure that we can see it on our mobile device. Really, really helpful. We have our preview button, our desktop preview, which is gonna be really helpful. When we press that, we get a preview of our prototype, of our design with all the interactions that we'll talk about later. And then we also have the percentage of how we're currently viewing it, and we can assign what percentage we want that view to be at. Maybe we wanna view it at 50%. It's gonna zoom all of our artwork in and out. We have our contextual panel over here, and it's grayed out because we don't have anything contextually 
selected. So once we select something, we get all sorts of options and they will contextually change depending on what you're currently selecting. So if I'm selecting an image like this, uh, we're going to get a lot of image options over here on the right hand side. You're always going to get some like your um, distribution and your alignment tools. You have your Boolean operations like adding, subtracting, dividing things, just like you would in Illustrator. We have some special features like repeat grids and components. And I do want to note that when you roll over a lot of these, you get nice, helpful little kind of like dialogue boxes. It'll tell you all about what those things do. You're always going to see your transform controls um, and the ability to flip things horizontally or vertically. We have some special features here called scroll, scroll groups, excuse me, that we'll talk about. Scroll groups are a lot of fun. You have some layout options, including responsive resizing, which we'll get to, as well as your normal kind of appearance elements, like changing the opacity to things, your fill, your border, and even some blending modes, just like in Photoshop or Illustrator. Then down at the bottom, if anything has a, is able to have a fill or a border, you're going to get all those options as well to open up and change the color. And, and we can also change those into linear gradients, radial gradients, angular gradients. Uh, we can drop images inside of these, which we'll talk about. And you can change your border sizes and all of the elements there uh, for the border as far as the thickness and the type of border and ends to all of your points and everything. So that's your contextual panel. If I click on text, I'm going to get some text-based options here, obviously, which we will talk about here in a little bit. Uh, we also have an effects panel down below when they are relevant, and you'll see even more things pop up as we start to click on components and components that have states and things that have to do with video other things will surface in that contextual panel and we'll talk about it as we go next up let's take a look at these things we've already kind of talked about these are artboards how do we draw new ones well we would either select the artboard tool over here uh, by or we could press the hot key of a but when we select the artboard tool we're also going to get in our contextual panel see i told you relevant things would pop up contextually we're going to get a bunch of different device sizes so we have mobile device sizes tablet sizes we have desktop sizes and even some social media sizes there we do have our little cursor here so we could just draw an artboard of any size we want or we could just click on any one of these like an iphone 14 pro max boom pops it right in and immediately names it and we can come up and double click on our layer just like that and rename it if we want to. Once we've created an artboard like this, we might want to actually draw some fun custom shapes on there. To do that, we're going to use our pen tool. And so we can either hit our pen tool up here or we can hit the hot key of P. And when we do that, we get our pen tool. So I'm going to zoom in here by pressing command plus to zoom into my artboard. You can also hold down Z and you'll see you'll get the zoom tool and we can zoom into a particular portion of our design or our artboard. I'm going to go back and hit P for pen tool and we can start drawing with our pen tool really very similar, almost pretty much identical to the pen tool. You'll find in Illustrator or Photoshop creating Bezier curves with it coming around and then connecting. Um, and then you do have some options inside there as well. You can click on any of these and mess with the handles and change the shape like so. And then once you've done that, obviously we can fill it with a color. Maybe we want like a really obnoxious purple color. We can take the border on or off and we can even start applying some of these um, effects like an inner shadow or drop shadow. And we have some fun things like background blur or object blur that you can play with as well. Um, but that is our pen tool. And then once we've done that, we might want a little bit more of a structured shape, not such a weird, crazy pink shape. So what we'll do instead is I'm going to hit R for rectangle. You could have also gone up and hit your rectangle tool, but R for rectangle is pretty easy to remember. I'm going to drag uh, holding down shift a perfectly constrained square out or if i let go of shift we can shape that any way we want it i'm going to release that and again fill it with an identifiable color so we can actually see it there and then we might want to actually draw a circle as well and we'll give that another equally atrocious color and then lastly why don't we pull our polygon tool out that we talked about during our ui tour and we'll draw out a polygon it's going to start with a triangle but you'll notice contextually things have showed up in our panel that will allow us to change that um, and so i can head right over here and change the amount of sides that our polygon has on and on you can go holding down shift will allow you to do 
move or increment anything inside of Adobe XD by 10, uh, 10 pixels or an increment of 10. So you can see I'm holding down and moving up to 13. Let's drop it back down to something like eight. We can also soften the, the edges of it a little bit so we can kind of round those uh, corners, the border radius of the corners. And then we can also, either through the percentage here, uh, we can reduce the inside kind of like shapes um, for our, um, our shape here. We have a little control here on the screen as well for those rounded corners. And then also to pull these in and out, creating different shapes and stars, uh, kind of angling those things down. And so from there, once we have the shapes that we like, all of them equally atrocious, we could select each of those uh, by just dragging over all of our shapes like so. And then we could use our Pathfinder tools or our Boolean tools, just like an illustrator, by adding them all together, unionizing them or subtracting them. And when you do that, Adobe XD is actually really smart. It holds on to each of the individual shapes. So it's all still very editable, which is really, really cool inside of Adobe XD. To add some text to our design. Uh, to do that, we could hit the text tool in our tool panel over here or just press T. Now you can either just click and this will allow you to start writing text onto the screen. Um, and we'd probably want to make our text a little bit better of a color. And to do that, we'll just use our selection tool and make it black like so. Um, or instead of just hitting T and then tapping to open up a single line of text box, we can actually grab and drag and create a defined text area. This is actually a pretty important distinction inside of Adobe XD because we have, I'm just gonna put some text inside of here. We have a couple of different types of text boxes inside and, and we're already kind of seeing those take place. So I'm just gonna zoom in here a little bit so you can see that this first one is what is called auto width text. That means that if I just left align it here, no matter how long the text goes, it's just gonna continue to stretch the width of the text itself. Whereas this next one here is auto height text. And that means that uh, as we continue to type, it's going to expand um, the actual height of the box. And then lastly, we do have such a thing as just a normal text box here. Um, so this last one is a fixed size. And that's going to be us actually rigidly defining the area. Now, the problem with that is that as we continue to go past, XD is going to hide that last little bit of text that's overflowing. Now, if we want to really quickly kind of like expose all of the text, we can kind of force it by just double clicking this red dot right here, double click that and expands to the perfect height of the text and transfers it to becoming a auto height text box. And so those are your three types of text box. You have your auto width, auto height, and your fixed size. Uh, once we have put text on the page, you can actually uh, choose like all the different like typography you have installed, um, selecting it through there. You don't have vis visible like or visual previews quite yet in XD, but I'm sure those are coming at some point. You can change the size and the different weights that you have. And you have all of the different options inside of here, like character spacing, line height, paragraph height, uh, justification, and then you have like, um, you know, creating, making things uppercase and all the ligatures and everything that are inside of here. But that's text in a nutshell. You can grab any text box and you can actually rotate simply by hovering over the, uh, like the area or like any of the little nodes. And that's actually kind of an important thing to notice here. Any of these little areas you'll see on pen tools, like points that you make or text boxes. These are called nodes and they're going to come into play a lot throughout uh, the rest of this tutorial. All right, let's move into some more advanced functions and features inside of Adobe XD. And let's start with styles. Uh, we are currently in our layer view. That's command Y. Uh, but if we press command shift Y, we can actually jump over to our document assets. And I'm going to zoom into my document assets so we can kind of see them. And I don't really have much. I do have a component, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but I don't have any videos or character styles or colors. These are all things that we can actually create assets out of store them here in our document assets. That way we're reusing the same styles, the same colors over and over and over. So for instance, I could zoom out and uh, let's find like, for instance, let's find this yellow. 
that's a good yellow we have that like in our fill right here and you can if you want uh just add like a little swatch inside of your like color swatch picker thing but you know that's not really as productive or efficient as if you had that thing selected that shape selected that had that colored fill and you just hit up here and press the plus button it's going to add that fill so later on if we hit r for rectangle and we're drawing maybe like a shape of some sort, we can come in here and right click and say, hey, apply this to the fill. And now we have we have effectively created what CSS does inside of front end code. We were able to cascade the styles throughout the rest of our design. So that means that if later on, I really don't like this yellow, uh, I'm gonna come in here and actually just right click and I'm gonna edit that color. It's gonna give me an, uh, like, an, like an editable uh, like color picker. And I'm just going to command C. I'm going to copy this so I can revert back to it. Maybe I really want it to be turquoise blue. Well, now everything you can see that had that color applied to it, that style or that color in my assets panel, it's going to change it across my entire project. Now, this is really helpful when I start designing applications and websites and I have 5, 10, 80, 150 screens inside of my project. I don't want to go through and change the color one by one. I want to be able to assign that color with this kind of global variable up here, change it once and see it changed everywhere. Let's put our yellow back and you can see everything goes back to normal. Pretty cool. We like that quite a bit. Let's do the same thing here with our black background. I'm gonna press plus and you can see it actually, because we, we grabbed our just our entire artboard, it just pulled every color out of our artboard. So we do have a few duplicates here and we can do a little bit of editing. We can come in here and say, hey, I'm gonna delete that one. Um, and I like these two. I'm going to just kind of rearrange them kind of a darker black and an off black yellow and white. And if we want to see these more in kind of like a, uh, more of a swatch view, we can change that from the list to the swatch, which is pretty cool. Um, all right. That's, I like that a lot. We also have some typography here so we can select multiple items and add those to our assets panel at the same time. I can select this headline and this body copy just come into character styles and pop those in and you can see it's going to give me uh like all of the description of everything that has to do with that typography selection i can kind of organize them and if i want to even rename them like headline and we'll call this i think a lot of times i like to call these like body copy and then whatever the like all the characteristics are like maybe it's 16 and this one's like 25 let's do 25 in there like that and now we have a really nice description of what that text is now no matter what we do later on if we come back to our really ugly design and we decide we want this to be a headline all i have to do is click here and it's going to apply that headline style and you can always override styles um, that you have on your screen right like it instances of that style so i can come in here and make this black right it's our headline because our headline is it's pulling the color of white into that style but we're just overriding it like this that doesn't actually change our headline style but if we select body, it's gonna make it white, select headline again, it's gonna revert back to the master style that's inside of our assets panel. So that's pretty cool. So we can actually hold on to styles and then kind of iterate on them on the fly without messing up our entire system that we're building over here. So those are our styles. Now let's talk a little bit about components because you can see I do actually have a component built in here called card, but let's do something a little bit simpler. Let's say I really like this button uh, that I have inside here. I'm going to press command Y to go back to my layers and you can see I have a little folder here. It has a little plus icon and the ellipse and it's wrapped inside. I just grouped it in a folder by pressing command G to turn it into a button. I really, really want to turn this into a component so that I can reuse that component, that one single component over and over. So if I make changes just like in my colors or my text to that single master instance of that component, it's gonna apply it everywhere. So how do I do that? Well, I can right click on it. And if I want to, I can turn it into a component or I can just hit the hotkey for that, which is Command K. So I've turned my button into a component. I can right click on it again. And you can see, I, I wanna now edit the main component. It's, it's gone ahead and created a component and hidden it somewhere. Now this is very important to note that when you have a main component, a master component, we're gonna have a little filled green diamond as one of the nodes. That dictates that this is the master instance. Any changes made to, he, to this uh, master component is gonna change it everywhere. So that means if I come in 
and I take my plus and I turn it into an X, look at that, it's gonna change it everywhere. Whereas this is an instance of the component and you can see it has a white empty diamond node on it, letting you know that it is an instance. It's also very important to note that when I select the master component, our contextual panel will tell you that this is the main component versus this one, which is in fact an instance of that component, right? So now we have a component, but what if we want this component to have more than one state? Actually, we saw something really, really interesting with the twisting of it from a plus into an X. I can kind of see that becoming like a really fun interaction and I don't want to create an entire another component, a separate button. That's going to be kind of weird. Adobe XD actually allows me to bake in multiple states of the same component, right? It's like having one thing with multiple faces or multiple instances, okay? So you can see we are, we're currently on our main component and it has a default state, right? We can add a new state. And later on, we'll talk about when we create these component states, some of these are built in prototype triggers, right? So to hover over it, to, to tap it and toggle it, but let's just go, uh, well, actually, let's go and experiment with it a little bit right now. Instead of creating a new state, we'll create a toggle state. It's just going to bake in a fun prototype interaction inside of it. We'll call this X to close. We get to name it. And then any changes we now make while we're selected on this state, it's gonna be a difference between the two states. So let's select our plus, we'll turn it into an X, okay? And you can see we're currently still on our X to close. Let's switch back to our default state. Now you can see we have two different states of the same component. What's really great about that is later on, Command Shift Y, I can open up that components menu and I can say I wanna bring in one of my buttons and then I wanna change it to an X to close version instead. One component, doing multiple things, super mind blowing, super fun. So that's components and component states. All right, let's talk a little bit about responsive resizing because we have our layout here and we want things to actually flex and move potentially um, as our artboard kind of grows. Right now, if I kind of pull my artboard and imagine like this being a device with maybe a larger device or a browser that's kind of stretching, this is not really playing nicely or responsively. So let's go ahead and press Command Z and go back. The first thing we wanna do is go to our artboard and actually turn on the toggle that says responsive resize. This means that anything that actually happens inside of our artboard now is automatically going to try to responsively resize. So now we can actually try to stretch out our artboard and you'll see we're getting a lot of really, really good results, but we're still getting some weird results as we kind of tuck in. Our text is moving weird. What if we grab it from the bottom here? and we do this, our text is flying up where it's not supposed to. Let's fix all that up right now, shall we? So the first thing we wanna do is go in and now not tap on the artboard, but on any individual element that I wanna work with, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna assess the responsive resizing kind of settings that have been placed there. It's not fixed width, it's stretching to the left and right, it's pinned to the top, it does have a fixed height. So my box is not actually growing when my artboard grows in its height. Let's figure out what's going on here with our text. I'm gonna go to manual and I want this to stay fixed to the top and the left. I want it to not have a fixed height. Um, so I do want it to stretch. So let's stretch our box out a little bit so that our text boxes match, but I do want it to have a fixed height. Okay, cool. Let's grab this one as well. Go over to manual, check that out. Let's pin it to the top. We don't want to fix width. Okay, we want it to stretch the left and the right as well like this. What happens now when I grab my artboard and I start actually stretching it out is my text actually stretches. The boxes are now officially set to be auto height. And so that means that they're going to ebb and flow along with my box and nothing's gonna get too weird. It actually kind of perfectly kind of changes. So maybe we have like a really small iPhone there and maybe we're moving out to a larger one. Now you'll notice as soon as I started kind of like moving past the size that was initially set for this device size, I get a little pull bar down here. And that's gonna actually dictate the above the fold or what is the actual device pane. Anything underneath it is gonna need to be scrolled to. So let's put some text down beneath and let's experiment. Let's press play on that. And you can see as I scroll down, we have some text down below and we have to scroll to it to get to it. We have defined the device size and you can actually see it's pretty apples to apples there, the size of it 
like and and actually like the perfect like dimensions of it so we're defining the dimensions and what is actually scrollable and that's what you're doing when you press artboard and slap an artboard onto the screen you're defining what the actual size and the height of it is and then choosing oh maybe i want to be a little bit less and only show this portion of it so that might be something to take into consideration as you're designing but usually a lot of times you can just work with the device defaults that are placed there for you. Let's talk next about photo and video integration inside of Adobe XD. That's right, I said video. It's pretty rad and it's really, really easy to use. If I have a shape, this is one of my favorite ways to use images and video inside of XD. I can grab an image that I want to bring in and I can do a few things. I could just drag one onto the artboard and now I have an image to play with or I could drag an image and I can actually hover over the shape, dropping it in will immediately crop that image into place. So now when I actually stretch my image around, it's trying to fill that shape and constrain it nicely. So we might wanna actually give our model a little bit more space here, Command Y to bring up our layers panel, and we might wanna bring our text down now. And again, our everything is defined, so when we look at it in preview, it's looking really, really nice, right? and it actually it'll stretch as well as we play with it so we do have our image over here it brought it in really massively you'll notice we do have some nodes at the top so we can any shape can be the edge of the border radiuses or the corners can be softened like that and as you do that you'll see in our contextual panel we're actually getting our edges here so maybe we want you know 200 for our border radius that's what 200 looks like if we want to do unique not like consistent all the way around, but unique to the top left and then the top right, bottom right, bottom left. It goes around. It shows you which one you're actually selecting. So maybe I want zero on this side and zero on the bottom left. Now I have this really interesting image that has sharp corners and I drug it into my artboard. So it has really sharp corners on two, two sides of it and soft corners on two other sides of it. So that's kind of cool. And uh, it is a shape, so it's going to try to constrain that shape. If you want to not constrain your image and you want to get really wonky, all you have to do is uncheck the, uh, the lock, and that will allow you to actually warp your image. But I highly recommend that you don't warp your images like that. All right, images are great. They say a thousand words, but what says even more words than a photo is actually a video. So let's do a little video integration here. I'm actually going to zoom out on my canvas, pressing Command minus. I'm gonna find a really fun video that I like, and I'm just gonna drag it in. Now in Adobe XD, you can't bring in massive videos. They can't be hour long live streams or movies or whatever. They have to be under 25 megabytes currently. All right, our video is awesome, but because it is a video, this element is going to be fixed and we don't want to warp our video and we don't have the ability to kind of constrain or contain it inside of a shape so what do we do well what i'm going to do is i'm going to drag my my photo out here i'm going to fill it with just a color and then i'm going to take my video and try to match it somewhat if i can i'm going to move my shape to the back and i'm going to select both of these uh, these shapes, this video and this shape. And then I'm actually going to mask with the shape, which the hotkey is command shift M. And when I do that, I now have a manually created mask. That means I can click into it and I can move my image around a little bit and mask it. I could make it larger if I want and do a little bit of art direction. Maybe we like it like that. But now we have a video that is cropped and masked and I'm able to kind of work inside of that mask. If you want to get rid of the mask, you just right click and say ungroup mask and it will take care of that for you. Let's remove our image and bring our video into play. And you can see that we're currently, when we are selecting a mask, we don't have any of these uh, of our video options available to us in our contextual panel. That's because we're currently selecting the mask group itself. We can twirl that open. You can see there with that little play icon is your actual video. When I select that, we get a bunch of different video playback options in our contextual panel. Let's click here on our little icon. We can actually kind of scrub through our video and see that we could play it and see what it's going to look like. You can actually even trim this a little bit and say, hey, I don't like that first part or that end part. So I want to trim that. I want to loop the playback. And then we can define, hey, do we want this video to play on tap? Do we want it to play automatically? Yes, we do. It's gonna play automatically and it's gonna loop and it looks exactly the way we want it to. Let's zoom out now. 
let's press play on our prototype up here in the top right corner and look at that we have video playing inside of our adobe xd design and it just keeps looping it's totally awesome it's totally amazing and that is the power of video inside of xd all right, let's keep going. We'll talk about a few other great advanced functions inside of XD, uh, starting with the idea of a repeat grid. I'm going to zoom into our design here. And I like this uh, I like this grouping of text here. So the first thing I want to do is I want to command G, put them in a group. And I'm just going to rename this text in my layers panel here. And then I really like it. I just kind of want to repeat this down the page. So we're going to use this button that we've been kind of looking at but ignoring the whole time and that's the repeat grid button. We can either hit that or press command R and it's going to allow us to create repeatable a repeatable grid down the page instead of duplicating over and over. I'm going to press command R and we get these fun little pull bars. I'm going to pull them down like so. Great, just like that. And then we can dictate the spacing between all of them. Maybe we want it to be more like 26. That's awesome. And then any change I make in that very first element of my repeat grid, it's gonna be reflected everywhere. So maybe we want this not to be pure black, but we want it to be maybe a little bit more of an off black like so. Maybe I wanna hit L for, uh, L for line and I wanna draw like a line inside. You can see how it's doing it. It's actually adding it to everywhere in my repeat grid. Maybe I wanna push it down just a little bit. Perfect, like that. And then we can select our entire repeat grid again and change the spacing on it. I love it. So maybe we really love this. This is exactly how we want it to look. And we can actually update. So this one could be the black tank here and this one could be the red tank. So we can update all the instances inside of our repeat grid and you can even update some of the text in uh, the original. But as soon as you affect any of the properties like the spacing of it or the actual like size of the text, it's gonna reflect everywhere else. So some things can be overridden, other things are gonna reflect everywhere. If you don't like this repeat grid or you're all done using it, you can right click on it and just say ungroup grid and now you have individual elements that you've kind of created. So now we can just kind of like tuck those away here on the left hand side and we have four unique separate ones outside of the repeat grid. Now these are really, really great um, and I'm gonna delete a few of these because they've worked for us for a moment, but we don't want them there anymore. Now our little grouping of text here is nice, but I might wanna quickly rearrange them. And it's really tedious to kind of grab this and move it down and then figure out where it needs to be. Instead, once I've grouped things and I have the group selected, over on the right hand uh, contextual panel, I can actually turn on stacks and I can turn on padding. What that's gonna allow me to do is say, I wanna stack these things vertically or horizontally like that. Let's stick with the vertical stack. And then we can actually dictate the spacing inside of our stack. Now, what's really great about this is at any point, you can grab an element in your stack. You can move it around and it keeps the actual spacing. It keeps the distance, right? Just moving things around. If I wanna add something to my stack, like maybe I want like a new paragraph, it too is controlled by the stacks master kind of padding and spacing. And so as we space eight there, that would be that would really work out great for us, just like so. So maybe we want this to be more of a, a link, like by now, we'll do something like that. Why don't we change the color of it to be something that's a little bit more like a link and that looks perfect. Why don't we actually duplicate another one of these and you can actually put stacks inside of stacks. So I can group those two together, turn stacks on and then change the padding there. And so now if you wanna use this instead of repeat grid, I can grab an individual element with inside of the, that's inside of the stack and I can actually copy and paste and it will actually hold all of the information of the spacing inside of the stack. Now what's also really great is we have control over the padding. So if we wanna turn on padding and actually kind of create some padding around our element, we can do that as well. And now it's kind of contained like perfectly inside with like nice eight pixel padding from the left and right hand edge. And maybe this was like a nice card for us or we're kind of creating an invisible card. That works really well. So that's how to use padding and stacks to really control and bring consistency to your designs. Next up, I'm gonna talk about a really powerful feature called scroll groups. You can do some really fun stuff with. And to do that, I'm gonna open up a different file. I'm gonna press my little home button here and I'm gonna grab this 
uh, map kind of lake and river activities finder that I built out. Inside of this design, we have the background, which is basically one big map. And I want to be able to scroll around inside of that map. Think of like Uber or Google Maps. I want to be able to scroll around. Now, if I drill down, I'm holding down control and that allowed me to kind of like drill down specifically on things. So if I wanna like drill down onto like the text inside of this button, I can actually hold down control and click right to it. It goes right to the exact layer that I'm looking for. Well, I wanna do that with my map. You'll notice that my map is inside what's called a scroll group. And that scroll group allows me to do something that's really cool, which is when I preview my prototype, I'm able to drag my map around. Now the, the details there are not actually connected to it, but I can drab, drag that map around because the map is bigger than the space defined for the scroll group. How do we do this? Well, I'm gonna grab this, uh, this map and we'll create it from scratch. I'm gonna come over here and press A for artboard and drop a new artboard onto my screen. And I'm gonna paste this map inside. Now we have a map and let's kind of zoom out and over and away so we can work a little bit. I really, really wanna be able to scroll around. How do I do it? Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna decide, hey, do I want this to be just horizontal scrolling? Do I want it to be vertical scrolling? Or do I want it to be horizontal and vertical? That seems like the one I actually want. So I'm gonna press horizontal and vertical. And you'll see what happens is I get some nice little pull bars put to the top, left, bottom, and right of my image. Now my image is still massive. So I'm going to choose where we want it to start. I'm going to go smack dab right in the middle so we can see a little bit of this lake down at the bottom. Now when I press play, I can scroll around with some nice kind of easing even, like just dragging and moving around inside all of the, like the entire map. And anything that goes inside of that scroll group. So you can see we have the scroll group and we have the rectangle. Maybe I want to pinpoint a place of interest on my map. Maybe that point of interest is represented by an E for an ellipse. And it's over here on this street. Let's make it really bright, really, really obvious with the purple like that. And we'll just call this point of interest, P-O-I. It's inside of the scroll group. So now when I scroll to it, you can see it's staying fixed to the map because it's inside the group that is allowed to scroll. All right, so far you've taken a tour, you've learned all the basic functions of Adobe XD and a lot of the advanced functions. Now let's go into prototyping where you actually bring your design to life. All right, we're back to our previous design that we were working on and we have um, a few screens here that we want to actually start creating some prototype actions. So we have screen one that has our text and our buy button and our video. And really what we want to create is a second screen with some differences. So why don't we move the text down and we'll actually double click into our mask and we'll stretch the size of the mask out and then we'll move the buy button down to follow. The first thing we're going to do is create a really basic screen to screen prototype. And we're going to do that by hitting over to the prototype view or workspace here. Uh, once we're there, I'm going to select my buy button and I'm actually going to grab this little blue node and just drag it over to my second artboard. That means on when I interact with this button somehow, it's going to move me over. And we know also that uh, let's just say we'll tap uh, the anywhere on the video to head back, okay? So we're gonna drag back. Now let's address what we call our triggers or our wires that we've created here. So we're just gonna drag that back. You can see two of them. One of them's happening this way, the other's happening that way. I can actually select the wire that's moving from this one to this one. And when I do that in my contextual panel, I get some information. It's telling me the trigger type, the type of transition that's gonna happen, where it's gonna go, and any sort of animation information that I need here. All right, so first thing we're gonna say is we really like this, it's a tap trigger. We're gonna explore some of the other trigger types as well, but we can do drag gestures, we can do work on our uh, Xbox controller or our keyboard, or we can actually even do voice controls, which is really, really fun. But let's start with a simple tap, and we won't do a basic transition, we'll do something like auto animate, which is where like a lot of fun happens. It's gonna actually automatically kind of smartly animate anything that's here that's a matching layer from one state or one place to another. You're gonna see some animation kind of take place. When we choose auto animate, we get to choose what type of easing. So let's do something like a simple ease out and then the duration that the animation is gonna take. Let's do something like 0.5 seconds. And then we have the one that's going back. 
it, you can select a wire or an interaction there and you can actually delete that interaction if you want. You're only deleting the interaction itself, not anything on the canvas, all right? So with that done, let's actually go back. We'll redo it again. And you can see on tap, it's gonna save those settings we just had for the previous one. Tap, auto animate with ease out in half a second. Let's go right back here and we're gonna just press the little home button. That creates the start of what we call our flows, right? And it gives us a little tag. We can name this flow. Let's call it animation, something like that. And we'll press play on it. You can see we get our video playing, looping, look really, really great. And we can hover over our button and you can see that's an interactable point. We get our little hover button. We click it, auto animates, and looks really, really smooth. We can click anywhere here on the video it'll auto animate back. And this is the basis for the majority of the prototype work that you'll do, state to state or artboard to artboard animation. Now what's really cool is we've actually already created a component that has baked in animation so that no matter where we place it, we don't have to worry about going from artboards to artboards, but the component itself already has an animation baked into it. We made our little button over here that has our X to close. And so we can place that somewhere in our prototype. And you'll notice that if I click on it, I don't switch to the other artboard, right? It's just happening here. Now I can duplicate it and take that same button and maybe do something interesting with it, like move it up here, right? But now you can see when I move from one to the other, that component's gonna move, but it's always interactable because it is in and of itself a component that has animation from state to state. Now we did that by creating that toggle state in between, but you can do all sorts of cool things by creating components and then actually creating animations inside of them. We're talking about meters that move and progress bars, all sorts of fun stuff. You can do that using component states and then prototyping just like you would the artboards between the components themselves or the states of the components. Pretty cool stuff. Let's go back to our prototype because previously it actually built in some drag gestures. You can see the trigger that's being used for this one is drag, auto animate, and it's moving from screen to screen. And so we press play, let's make a little room so we could see it. We just kind of drag over and we get fun drag gestures changing the image inside, the size, the masking, and all the details below to slide in and out. Really, really cool. There's a lot of other really cool action types that you can use. We won't go into all of them, but I'll show you where to find them. Instead of doing a simple tap with an auto animate, you could have done a really quick, simple, fast transition like that. You could have also created it into a hyperlink. It'll actually open up a browser on your device or on your computer. Uh, you can create overlays, which will allow you to create slide out menus or modal dialog boxes that pop up and you'll be able to pull in designs from other artboards to be that modal or be that dialogue. You can scroll to, you can create anchor links that scroll up and down the page like a navigation in a website that actually like leads you down to the very bottom, maybe to the footer. You can just go right back to the previous artboard. We can actually play audio and do speech playback. We can do crazy things inside of XD. I'll leave these for you to explore, but these are the different action types that are available to you. One more trigger type that we haven't covered yet is timed triggers. You'll notice when I go back into my prototype and I select any element, I get a lot of different trigger types. I get tap and drag, keys and gamepad and voice, but I don't get time triggers. That's because time triggers can only be applied to the artboard as a whole, not to individual elements. So let's come in and grab the entire artboard itself and actually drag that wire over to the next artboard. And what we get there for triggers now is the opportunity to create a timed trigger. Let's create a timed animation. Let's have it delay about two seconds and then we'll have it auto animate over there and let's have it do something really crazy like wind up and it'll be a really long animation like something like two whole seconds so it'll wait two seconds and it'll do a long two second animation if we haven't clicked anything yet with that said we can press play let's see if it works thousand one thousand and two it's doing it all on its own let's go back one thousand and one one thousand and two it's just because it's a time trigger, it's just happening. We can do the same thing over here. So we get like a nice bounce back and forth. Uh, let's do a, make sure we're selecting an entire artboard. Good, like that. Yes, we want a time trigger, two seconds, the whole thing, everything's looking great. Let's press play. And now with my hands up in the air, you should be able to see it go there 
And then after 1001, 1002, it should go back. And these are your timed triggers. You can do a lot of really cool things with timed triggers. You can do loading animations and you can do like user generated, like input, all sorts of really cool things using your timed animations and triggers. But the last few things I want to talk about are plugins and sharing, super powerful inside of Adobe XD. Here we are back inside of our project, and we've really been working a lot in our Layers panel, Command-Y, or our Assets panel, Command-Shift-Y, to open up all of our document assets. What we haven't pressed is Command-Shift-P to go down to our little plugins menu, our little Lego block down here, and Adobe XD has tons of great plugins you can install for free and just start using things like building charts or color scales and ranges, adding confetti or color like plugins, adding maps and lorem ipsum, Lottie files, photos and renaming things for contrast and UI faces. There's all sorts of great ones and I won't go into, you know, all the ones that I have here or the ones that I use, but it's really, really simple to use plugins. All you gotta do is go into that plugins menu. And if you don't have one you like, you can press plus and that'll open up your Adobe CC screen where you can search for plugins inside so maybe we want some icons all you have to do is install it like that and it is acquired it's installing the plugin as we speak and then as soon as it's done it will be available for me to use it'll pop up in my plugins panel over here on the left hand side all right, it's been installed. We should be able to look over here and see icons for design. There it is. To run your plugin, all you have to do is select whichever one you wanna use, click on it, and it will start running in the left-hand panel. This is a photo finder where you can find lots of really cool images and then immediately apply them into the shapes and into your artboards inside of Adobe XD. Plugins are great, but sharing your design is even greater. And to do that, all you have to do is move over to this elusive share workspace we haven't touched yet. When we do that, we decide which flow we want to share um, and then when we do that we can actually create a few settings up here so maybe we really want to create a link um, a new link right here and then we're going to say what do we want the view settings to be now it's just really just setting the type of functionality and permissions um, for whoever's going to view it so maybe we want to get feedback people will be able to do some commenting do we they need to be able to see the prototype and then actually get code components out of it that'd be for development um, presentations user testing or we can customize let's just choose development and we'll export for ios anybody that has the link will be able to share and actually see this thing and so we are generating the link right now and as soon as it's done adobe xd is going to create that link for us when we click on it it'll open it in our browser and we'll be able to have a working like prototype version of what we've created. You can see you can actually do all the interactions just like you could before, but you also are able to open it up and get all sorts of different details. For the code environment, uh, for the developer environment, that would be sizes and colors, character styles and interactions that are defined um, and they can get all like the different elements that they need out of them as well as being able to comment and we can actually like place a pin somewhere and then comment on it like this and that comment will then be available for feedback. We can reply to it and kind of like communicate and interact with our clients or our stakeholders. And this is sharing, creating these links, managing the links. And to do that, we can open up our plus here. We can go back and manage all of the links that we have created. And they're like living documents, living files. And we'll be able to see them all right here. We can click on any one of those and share the link from our link database as well, which is really, really cool. Well, that's it. That's everything you need to know to get started with Adobe XD and begin designing websites and applications and blowing people's minds with all of your creativity. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I make lots of videos about design and development and Adobe XD also. So ring that bell so you know when more videos like this one come out. If you have any questions, leave those down in the comments and check the description for a bunch of helpful links about Adobe XD or how to learn more about design with me and other great resources. I hope you're having an amazing week. I hope you're designing amazing things, making amazing things, and using tools like this one to accomplish your goals. We'll see you in the next one.